Sodom and Gomorrah. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters, who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. Lot, his wife and daughters, all fled from the terrible destruction of Sodom. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Wicked men were punished by the Lord in a divine judgment of fire. The intense heat consumed the wicked cities and their inhabitants. But Lot's wife looked back toward her beloved Sodom, violating the angel's command and was thus turned into a pillar of salt. Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them to destruction, making them an example of those who afterward would live ungodly. This is a visible example that is mentioned here. The Bible tells us the cities were in the plain of Jordan, which is the area surrounding the Dead Sea, and it was once a beautiful lush area. At 1,300 feet below sea level, this is the lowest place on earth, a very hot and desolate region that was cursed by God because of the sins of the people. Flavius Josephus, the first century Jewish historian tells us, there are still the remainders of that divine fire and the traces of the five cities are still to be seen. Popular thought has it that the cities were later covered by the waters of the Dead Sea but if Josephus could see the cities in his day, then we should be able to view them also, as the water level has, if anything, receded since his time. Driving along the coastal highway of the Dead Sea in Israel, one can soon see peculiar formations that are of a lighter color than the surrounding terrain. These are the ashen cities, destroyed by the wrath of God. These cities were consumed by intense flames, a supernatural heat that was directed by the hand of God. Today there is ash that is of lighter color than the surrounding mountains and terrain. As mentioned in the Bible, this is a desolate area where nothing grows. Inspecting the formations closely, one can see structures containing man-made elements such as 90 degree angles. Even though the buildings were consumed by the fire, the remaining ash in these cities is comprised of a heavier material due to the inclusion of brimstone or sulfur and still retains some of the original shapes of man-made structures. This stunning structure stands out as a singular formation with four sides surrounded by a deep moat. We move in closer to inspect the unusual features evident on the side of the formation. On the side of the structure, this swirling pattern is different from any type of sedimentary rock or soil that would normally contain horizontal, even layers. These swirling designs were also seen in other ashen formations in the cities. This is evidence of extreme heat, up to 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, where thermal ionization occurs, when the electrons repel and attract, forming these unusual swirling designs. In Lot's day, this area was a swirling cauldron of death and destruction, rained down from the Lord in heaven. Strange anomalies can be seen here, such as these fragile layers of material which disintegrate when touched. The limestone buildings in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were totally transformed into ash by the consuming fire of the Lord. Evidence of this destruction is revealed in the white gypsum anomalies in the area, including unusual shapes of chalk-like material, which is not found in other parts of the country. Even layers of white and gray material can also be seen, 
comprising gypsum and ash. At the time of Elijah on Mount Carmel, the Lord sent down a superheated fire from heaven, consuming the stone altar and sacrifice, turning them into ashes. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. We are also told, for the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When God unleashes a consuming fire, it will turn stone into ashes. A large section of gypsum has fallen down here. It clearly exhibits the alternating layers of white ash that is calcium sulfate, gray ash that is calcium carbonate. One can also find loose or powdery ash that is quite thick and has been deposited next to the formations. The ash is made up of calcium carbonate and calcium sulfate, which comes from the limestone buildings and the brimstone mixing together during the fire. In the formations themselves, some material can be gently raked off the surface with the slightest touch. Looking down the city streets, one can notice man-made shapes which are not found in nature. Here we see a building with square sides or 90 degree angles. From the opposite side, we can see the same symmetrical structure and man-made angles. We can see the remains of walls that extended outward at 90 degree angles from the main structure. Once again, further evidence of man-made construction. Here we can see square windows that are visible in the walls of the structures, which give us a view of the past. Scanning the city for signs of prior habitation, we can see in the foreground a tower of cylindrical design positioned at the edge of the city. The remains have suffered greatly during 3,500 years of wind and rain erosion. Even still, there is the appearance here of streets and man-made structures. The whole land is brimstone salt and burning. It is not sown, nor does it bear, nor does any grass grow there, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and his wrath. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, from the Lord out of the heavens. Brimstone. Our first sample was found here, having been washed down from a higher location. This is the heavenly marker left behind, which proves the sites to be the real Sodom and Gomorrah. Ron Wyatt was the original discoverer of these cities in 1989, and he now describes the brimstone found here. Okay, we're down at Sodom and Gomorrah still. Right in front of you, you see some unusual looking spots on this, uh, shall we say, layer of ash. It's not stone, it's ash. Now we'll move in for a close-up of this. And you can see that they're kind of circular shaped uh, places. Now what we have found, and we'll move in a little closer here, is that inside each of these is sulfur. Uh, that is in most of them. Now the ones that do not have sulfur in them, and this one we just took a bunch of sulfur out and put it in our specimen bag, but the ones that don't have sulfur have a very black center where they have, uh, where it's been very hot. So now we'll move in on this one there is some sulfur still present 
and back off just enough so you can see what we're up to here and we'll go collect that sample in a bag exploring the cities further more brimstone was found of various shapes and sizes Several samples had been washed down to areas below and were added to our growing collection. This brimstone is made of monoclinic, white sulfur that has been burned or cooked at a high temperature. It is quite different from natural sulfur that is formed in geothermal areas. Samples were taken to a lab for analysis. Each specimen was carefully separated and prepared for testing, with the outer portion cast aside. Next, the samples were dried and placed in a rock crusher. Then they were pressed onto a disc. Then they were loaded into a machine for the semi-quantitative X-ray analysis. Each sample was individually transported into the testing chamber for analysis. The results proved to be quite amazing. As the samples were found to be 98% pure sulfur, unlike any other sulfur found on Earth. This pure, cooked sulfur is the heavenly marker that was left behind to show the world that the Lord, without a doubt, destroyed these sinful cities at His command. Critics have said that the sulfur is from volcanic activity, but that type of rhombic sulfur is only 40% sulfur and is of a crystalline form, unlike the white, compacted monoclinic form that is found in the ashen cities today.